Go on da, Theodore. The Vikings left this language behind, and it existed for centuries after the era ended. Controlled by Norway until almost the 1500s, with family ties going to Norway for another 200 years after that. This language was spoken on really remote islands until English and Scots displaced it. However, today, it's so Old Norse. Hello everyone, and welcome to the Lang Shack. Today we're going to talk about the Norn language, some of its history, and present some grammar that has been preserved in modern Shetland Scots and finish off with a couple of short Norn texts comparing the language to Faroese. Norn remnants are the basis for Nenorn, which is a new language that aims to revive Norn. Some of the grammar that's lacking from records, we have filled in with Nenorn forms. Norn was spoken on the British islands of Orkney and Shetland, and even parts of Caithness, in extreme northeastern Scotland where it served as the primary language for centuries. However, it died off in Caithness centuries sooner before it did in Orkney and Shetland. The languages began to gradually fade after Orkney and Shetland were given to Scotland as a dowry as the result of James III marrying Margaret of Denmark in 1468. The last speaker, Walter Sutherland, died in 1850 ending the last glimpse of the Viking language in the United Kingdom. The modern variants of Scots spoken on Shetland and Orkney today do have significant vocabulary from Norn, mainly in fishing, agriculture, and food. There is very little documented about the language besides a translation of the Lord's Prayer, a few poems, and words left in place names and a course in modern Shetland and Orkney Scots. Luckily, whew, most Norn references left behind were recorded in an etymological dictionary by Jakob Jakobsen. Jakob, the son of Jakob who named his son Jakob, a Faroese linguist. So how similar was Norn to its other siblings in the Norse family? Well, according to Trujo, many topographical names in Shetland are most similar to those in northwestern Norway. But Norn vocabulary seems to be related to variants more south of northwestern Norway. So, basically in northwestern Norway! Who knows? Based on the translation of the Lord's Prayer, it appears that by the time it was collected, Norn appeared to be most similar to Faroese, and that English and Scots had already had a significant impact on the language. Now on to the features! Woo! Like most Scandinavian languages, now Norn had four noun cases, the nominative, the accusative, the genitive, and the dative, and three genders, the masculine, the feminine, and the neuter, as well as weak and strong nouns. Oftentimes in Norn, the masculine nominative ending had er in the strong noun. So, strong nouns are nouns that don't end in the vowel, and weak ones are ones that do. However, each Germanic language had its own rules constituting what was a weak and what was a strong noun. Moldera handalos, mother without an arm. Fogborder, a dense snowstorm or a blizzard. Funder or funder, a finding or discovery. Kidenpuster, a scolding. In the masculine nominative ending for weak nouns, there tended to be more variation of endings. Bilk, bilky, bulk, a bump. Rumi, remi, a scot. Sloggy, slaga, a slaughter. Most feminine and neuter nouns had no ending specific to the nominative case. The accusative case also appears to have merged with the nominative in many cases. Floga, fly. Flokra, flukra, large quantity of snowflakes. Yoga, eyes. Yora, ear. Nir, kidney. The genitive case is like the apostrophe s in English, and takes of or the positive, or the possessive sense generally. This was done in Norn as an s most of the time. 
This is possibly done because of the influence from English and Scots. Because S is our main genitive form, this form was probably never going to disappear from Norn. Pole's gill. Pole's rift. The fellow's end. The mountain's end. Rinnesfell. Field mountain. In some cases, the strong feminine and strong masculine forms were R and R, but were just A and E in Norn. Hamnavol, Harbor's Creek, Skotnarur, Skotna's Rudder, Ufsahella, Ufsar's Pavement, or Ufsar's Wall, the Jornatex, Jorn's Plot of Land, the Siuratex, Siur's Plot of Land. The dative case, usually the noun is in this form when the noun is to or for someone or something else this usually took the noun took the form e in norn for strong nouns on the in breath in strong smell stuck in groity positioned alarm with stones i'm really sorry about these horrible translations the grammar resource had no translations for these, and I tried the best I could with the Old Norse and Icelandic dictionary that I had available to me. In weak nouns, the dative in the accusative case had the same ending. Fulgu, ful, fulgu, an abundant pension? Ilsko, ilsku, ilska, evil. Many to most nouns in Norn use a very similar plural ending to Old Norse ones. The Kletters, rocks. The Angers, pastures. Vister, supplies. Ilsker, evil things. Each case also had its forms for the plural. The genitive plural was a, and the dative plural was n from Old Norse um and the accusative plural tended to be the same as the nominative. Pronouns. The pronouns, some of these are, are reconstructed and others are there from Old Norn sources. Ek is me, ek is I, and mog or meg is me. You was do or thu, not sure about that one. Deeg and dolk which come from Thig. In the genitive, this is Dean, and in the dative, this is Jer, which still exist in contemporary Shetland Scots. Haltu dog at Jer, from Haltu Thig at Jer. Uh, he and she was Hana, and she was Hun. Hun is Ninorn, however, Han was the only form recorded for the third person singular form. Eat, it, sorry. <laughs> it is Dav. We, is V, which is from Ninorn. Wus is dative, which was in an old, which was in the Lord's Prayer. Icelandic os is similar to this. You all, D. However, it is, you can also say dor. This is similar to Faroese tigur. They is der. This is also Ninorn. Der is from that er. Der meant that is, this is. Ita or yada comes from theta, meaning that, and it means that is. Numerals, I mean numbers. So the numbers were very similar to other Scandinavian languages. However, they were also a little bit more simplified in pronunciation. However, they had all the number forms that other Scandinavian languages had. N, tver, trir, fire, fim, Sex, sh, uta, nia, tia. The ordinal numbers tended to have t or nd at the end. Thirsty, anar, second. This is very different. It's not teverti or teverendi, it's anar. Tridi, fjordi, femti, and so on. Tretin and fjomtena, meaning 13 and 15, also underwent some changes. Verbs. I mean verbs. In the present, these appear to have a similar conjugation to Faroese, and even some modern Scandinavian languages. But the r 
tends to be dropped in many instances and appear to be more used in the second and third person singular forms. Sitter, sits. Seve, sleeps. Leka, to play. Hanadaya, the day breaks or it dawns. Caller, to call. A present tense conjugation, most of these forms are based on ni are based on ni norn, which take as much as they can from norn. Exite, du sitter, han sitter, visita, diseta, derseta. Plural forms tended to end in a. The same for all plural persons. Wakna come from wake up, as in v v wakna, d wakna, or der honga which you'll see in a riddle later on in the video. The past tense. In Ninorn, this typically ends in D and do for weak verbs, or V and vu, depending on what the verb ends in. To call. Ek kaladi. Duk, du, du kaladi. Han kaladi. Vi kaladu. Di kaladu. Der kaladu. A strong verb example. For drive, this would be very similar to saying I drove or I went or in forms like this where you have a T instead of an ED. Eg drev, du drev, han drev, vi drivu, di drivu, der drivu. Nor intended to add a vowel to indicate the imperative, as in a command. Tuck! Com! Coma! Trevi Ria. There was also a subjunctive, which is like, I wish I were rich. Tavit said, uh, curse you, which literally means fie upon you, which nobody says anymore. Ivervide. Huh? The, the I here is possibly from English or Scots. The present active participle. In one of the riddles you will see, driliandi comes from drilandi. This andi at the end means shaking. Similar, this is also similar to the ando in many romance languages for the present progressive. Gemsina comes from gemsanda, gibbing or scoffing. There was a past passive participle with weak and strong noun forms, as did Norn's adjective system, which is very complicated and we didn't go over that today. Now on to the Faroese comparisons! Now that we've seen some basic grammar, let's take a look at the Shetland's Lord Prayer. Some isolation allowed it to retain more of its Norse character as opposed to the Orkney variety, which tends to be a little bit more influenced by Scots. This is very, this is, you can tell that many words at first glance are obviously English and Scots, like konungdom, which is obviously kanung from an old English word meaning king plus dom, kingdom. Then there's riki and Rikiv, Old English used the word like this, Reich. Fraus and Frausa for Delivra. And Forgive most likely changed to this because of the similarity of Ferigev and Ferirgev to the word forgive. The preposition for against is nearly the same as in our language, against, which obviously had to have come from English or Scots. Even the word but is being used, which is men in Faroese. Freistingar and Freisti for temptation has now appeared to become Vera. Perhaps the Vera has something to do with the with the Frey and Freisni? Here's the second text we're going to look at. A riddle in Norn. A variant does exist in England, but we just gave the direct translation so that you could understand it word by word. Thira Honga, Thira Gonga, Thira Stad Upasko. Toa Vestra Vaigave, and on comes Atadriliandi. You can see here that they are very similar to each other. Honga Hanga, Gonga Ganga, which is like gong, which is like going or gone. Standa Upi Sku, Sku and Ski, both that sky. Bay is the field. Vestra, to Vestra, to show the way. Vague and Veg are like way. And this driliandi, which comes from an Old Norse form, drill, this is similar to the English form drill, I believe. So it would be like drilling, but it has a different meaning in our language than it does in Norn and different Norse languages. 
Darlar Aftas. This Ata and Aftas both mean after, I believe. And you see, comes must have come from English too. Because in the last form it says, Og ein Darlar Aftas. So that's interesting. So it is pretty similar to Faroese in these two translations, but you can definitely tell that the two languages have definitely had a significant impact from English and Scots. Question of the day. If you know a Scandinavian language or have studied one before, what do you think of its grammar? Do you think that Norn could have been mutually intelligible with Faroese? By the way, did you know there was a Greenlandic Norse too? If you like language videos, then check out more on the Langshack channel. Catch us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at the Langshack handle, and visit us at our official website, langshack.org. I hope that you all enjoyed this video, and catch you in the next video.